Hello again ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while since I made my last Linux video. Um, <laughs> I've planned a series of videos but uh, I have no time. As you heard, I'm a father and a husband and yeah, life has to be done at first of all. And as you might remember also, I'm not a native English speaker. Uh, I watched some uh, channel awesome videos prior to recording this. Hopefully my brain has switched, but that's not what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Debian Stretch 9. And here it is. It's frozen since February. It's not uh, released as stable yet, but I have no doubts. This is stable for me. What should happen? I've been on Debian testing on this cycle some time ago. And I know this will work. It has to. Testing was stable. Why shouldn't it now? Uh, on the other hand, this is not my computer again. Uh, I have to get rid of this right here. Uh, just go away. This is the computer of my wife and uh, prior th to that she had a Linux Mint Mate and had problem with the 4004 Ubuntu base, especially with the wireless drivers. It was uh, not all that pleasant, but now here we are, and now let's see what we have here. I've already tweaked a little bit, and I hope you don't mind that everything here is German, because I will explain in great detail what this all is. The XFCE desktop is not the desktop you're expected to have on a Debian install. If you don't choose the desktop, it will install GNOME. On the other hand, this here is a machine that you can describe as decent. It's an Intel, it's an Intel processor. It's not an Intel i processor. It's something. Don't even know what it is. Uh, Pentium R CPU N da, 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 whatever. Okay, and it's not the fastest machine in the world, but. Well, it gets the job done. It's a machine my wife uses for surfing the internet, for looking at pictures and so on and so forth. And what I like about the XFCE desktop, which I use again, <laughs> I know. I have to point out I'm not an XFCE user anymore myself. I'm on KDE, on Arch Linux, a totally different beast. But since this is not the fastest machine in the world, it's a decent machine, XFCE, it, it works. That's it. And it's quite stable in in itself because the release cycles are so slow and they put so much thought and effort into everything. Well, it, it, it gets the job done. It doesn't get in my way. As you see here, I um, installed the Arc GTK themes and the Fayenza icon theme. Uh, sorry for any mispronunciation that I might make in my stupid Bavarian brain that usually speaks like Arnold. Yeah, this is an interface quite similar to Windows XP, so I think, uh, I know there's a debate going on, is, uh, does this fit uh, Windows switches? I think it does. Let's look what we have here. These are all the uh, system configs. You look into it if you have to. Education's not that. We have the LibreOffice suite here. Again, LibreOffice, it works. It's standard in most Linux distributions for a reason. Might not be the best product in the world, but it gets the job done and it's easy to use. You open it and everybody knows what to do with it. It looks like uh, Word 6.0 and that's a paradigm we're used to. Let's just open the writer. Don't leave me now. Yeah, you know what this this is. Everyone can work with this. Oh, no problem. Ah, I still have to update a few of the German language packs. Okay, graphic we have, yeah, I think it's Eviance, the gnome. Yeah, it's the gnome one. Okay, I'm not the biggest fan of GNOME, but again, it gets the job done. No worries, no problems, everything's okay. GIMP stands for itself. Yeah, LibreOffice again. And Ristretto, Ristretro, and I have to pronounce it like this, um, is the image viewer. The problem is uh, there are lots of images on this 
particular machine. I don't want to show that much because yeah, there there are a lot, there are a lot of uh, private images of my family, and I don't I don't want to show you these. But uh, it's a small lightweight program. It works. Okay. And the scanning program. I, unfortunately, I can't test this because I don't have a, a scanner. Okay, now it gets interesting. This is uh, some stuff I had to do myself because usually this comes with Firefox, as most Linux distributions do. But uh, I'm a Firefox person, my wife is a Google Chrome person. Okay, um, for the sake of um, privacy. I will install another little browser because Debian is not as easy as Ubuntu but it's no rocket science either. The thing you have to keep in mind is um, that you're dealing with a upstream distribution. There's not uh, Debian is no derivative, it's an original work. And there's a certain charm to using upstream distributions, like uh, myself, I'm using Arch, she's using Debian. Uh, by the way, I believe the package management in Arch is faster than dpackage and apt is. But, uh, yeah, th that's some kind of preference. Is Arch better than Debian? No. Is Debian better than Arch? No. They're total different distributions. They're both Linux, but Arch is, as you know, the bleeding edge and Debian is stable. Okay, what I wanted to show you. If you want to install uh, Google Chrome on Debian, that's one of the very few programs you don't find inside the repositories. So we go to the site, we click download, and there it is. 64-bit point deb file for Debian or Ubuntu. And for this purpose, I installed a fine little program, it's called gdebi. Okay, nothing to do here because you already did it. And I will show you what this can do. When I now you sudo g debi Google, genau, he still finds it. He's looking for the dependency tree and he basically does the job. Okay, now you ask me, Google Chrome is a browser that combines Maritzic design. Okay, the dependencies, blah, the dependencies are all okay. Yeah, because I already installed it. So you don't have to worry. Uh, it is possible to just use a uh, dpackage and uh, force uh, apt-get install uh, apt-get install minus f afterwards. It gets the same. But I think that's a little uh, yeah useful tool that you can do. And the other thing is, she has Skype on there, and you know. Skype is not in the repositories either because uh, Debian is a distribution that cherishes free software and Skype, as you know, is owned by Microsoft. Chrome is, as you know, from Google. So, Debian Wiki, Skype. And that's something I recommend to all of you. If you're searching for something, just type Debian Wiki and blah, 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 whatever, just like I do, Arch Linux wiki, blah, 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 if you want to know something, and the documentation is great. And here we see, da, 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 installing Skype 5.0.0.5, Debian stretch. Ah, what does he say? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Download Skype for Linux Alpha. Where does this bring me? Where does this get me? Oh, many, many colors. Dep, okay. 
then he says it works. Ah, and there we have it, sudo dpackage minus, uh, uh, minus i, and then it got the job done. Um, as I said, Debian is maybe the most stable distribution on Earth because they put that much uh, work and effort into it. Everything you get installed on the system, you can expect it to run flawlessly. No problem. Multimedia, I did nothing there because VLC Media Player, everybody knows it, everybody loves it. Again, it's not the best and greatest media player you can have. I personally prefer Paroli or on my KDE, uh, KDE desktop the Dragon Player. But again, it, it gets the job done. No worries. Uh, printer configuration... Uh, ah, that that reminds me. I still have to install that one printer we have. Yeah, It's easy. You add it and usually... Uh, don't bother me right now. Usually if you have a printer attached to it, he will find it, he will ask you for it, he will look for the right drivers. We have a brother printer and I know uh, HP printers are also known to cause very very little problems. And here this is just some utilities you might or might not need. Since they're not big I just leave them and that's it. That, that That's Debian 9. I had to install two programs and uh, the Arc theme to get it up and running for the needs of my beloved wife. And since it's still unstable, let's look. Yeah, I know my wife's password. <laughs> but I'm not willing to do something evil with it. Ah, as you see, the Skype repo is making a little... Okay, and we have some updates here. Yep. Then just do it. The last time I wrote a Debian blog, it said something about there are 40 release critical bugs in a set of thousands of packages. I don't know how you feel about this, but this meets my expectations of stable and after that it will be stable and will be running for its whole lifetime usually five years every now and then service packs will come the way and fix security bugs or little bugs that are easy to fix and that's it though it runs today and it runs great it works and it will in five years. And that's it. Debian. Great job again. You brave developers all over the world. Thank you again. I've been using your distribution for almost a year. It was already the testing cycle into Stretch, which is now about to come to an end and become stable. Great work. Really, really great work. And uh, thanks to you all out there. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for listening to me rambling in a language that is not my mother tongue. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate... Uh, all that clicks that got on the video where I just uh, put uh, Linux Mint XFCE on an old legacy hardware and uh, very much of you seem to enjoy it. That's that's encouraging and that's very flattering. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm still planning to do a little series about how to get into Linux because it's really not that difficult. But as you're watching that video, you might already know that might take me some weeks, might take me some months, might take forever. Let's see what comes out of this. And until then, thank you for watching and goodbye.